Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> One tomato isn't gonna make it to the dance today. That's all right. It's no longer five cups of onions because I just launched some onions across the room. Make sure the recipes that you are using is from a trusted and researched source. I am not one of those things, <laughs> but I follow those things. Welcome to our kitchen. My name is Crystal. And today I am canning up salsa. And I am so excited to do this. I have been waiting very patiently. Just so you know, I usually down in the description box also have the chapters, so the timestamps of the different topics covered in the video. If you're specifically looking for one part or one thing, like putting lids on jars or something, it'll be marked and timestamped down in the description, so you can just jump to that section. Please make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful, entertaining, or both. <laughs> that would be really great. And comment down below, do you like your salsa spicy or mild? I like both. Today, I am making salsa to can up to keep in our pantry. Steve and I eat a lot of salsa. I made two salsa recipes from the ball canning book last year. The first First one was the jalapeno salsa and we loved it. It was super spicy and really, really good. We also made the zesty salsa and let me show you the book. So it's from this book here and it has the jalapeno salsa I think in the beginning. It does. So right there is the jalapeno salsa. That's one of the ones we made last year. The other one that we made is the zesty salsa. And that is actually the recipe that I'm going to be making again today. We liked the jalapeno salsa and we liked the zesty salsa, so I'm gonna be kind of adding more peppers to the zesty salsa. Now this morning, I have already blanched and chopped all of the tomatoes. It is kind of a tedious process to do that, but it is well worth it to get the skins off fairly easy. I'm gonna go ahead and get my water bath canner filled up and get it heated up on the stove. If you are interested in this recipe, you can either get the book, <laughs> which I recommend, or you can go onto their website, and I'm pretty sure they have the zesty salsa recipe on their website. If they do, I will link it down below. There's also recipes on the National Center for Home Food Preservation. They have salsa recipes too, along with other different ones. So I'll link one of the salsa recipes down below too if you're interested in that. You know, I understand sometimes like in the rush of things when you've got garden stuff coming in, you don't have the books. We have the internet. There's tons of recipes on there. Just make sure the recipes that you are using is from a trusted and researched source. I am not one of those things, <laughs> but I follow those things. So I'm going to be following today the zesty salsa recipe from the ball box. Water bath canner going here. Get it warmed up. Nope, wrong burner. There we go. All right, so I got the water bath canner started and now I will get into making the salsa. Okay, so let's go through our ingredients here. I have probably close to five cups of sweet peppers are all from our garden. A mixture of bell, pimento, leja, just a variety of different peppers back here. I have about five cups of chopped up onion, white onions. The onions are not from the garden if you've been following along. We had horrible luck with growing onions. So these ones are from the store. These hot peppers are all from our garden as well. It's a mixture of, uh, I think, one Hungarian wax, jalapeno, poblano, and pepperoncini peppers all mixed in. I think I have probably around four cups. And then right here is a mixture of all the slicer tomatoes. There's no paste tomatoes that I'm using in this. And then this is a mixture of organic homegrown cilantro as well as organic cilantro from the grocery store. I just didn't have enough for the recipes. I was actually in the store the other day, and so I grabbed a bundle of organic cilantro, just in case, and I'm glad I did. And then this is just five or six cloves of chopped up homegrown garlic, some pink Himalayan salt, but you can use regular salt, it's just fine. And then we have just normal apple cider vinegar. So the first thing the recipe says is to go ahead and prepare your canner, lids, and jars. I will get into that when we get to that stage, but everything is all ready to go. So it says in a large stainless steel saucepan, we're gonna go ahead and add all of our ingredients and bring it to a boil over medium high 
high heat. We will start with the tomatoes. The bell of the ball. If I can do it without spilling, it will be, it will be a good day here. Look at that. Oh, only one missed. Only one missed the pot. One tomato isn't gonna make it to the dance today. That's all right. The recipe calls for 10 cups of tomatoes. I have 14 cups. I'm gonna kick the burner on between a four and a five. I'm just at a medium level for now as I add my ingredients. The next thing I'm going to be adding is the five-ish cups of bell peppers. The recipe calls for five cups of seeded bell peppers and that is exactly what I have. All right, next thing I'm gonna be adding is the jalapenos. I'm gonna add them to this measuring cup here first so we can see exactly how many I got. I have about the same amount of spicy peppers. These are not seeded. The only ones that I seeded were the poblanos and that was to make it easier to chop up. But other than that, uh, the jalapenos, everything, all the seeds were left because like I said, we're, we're, we like it a little spicy, so we're fine with it. But the recipe calls for two and a half cups of spicy peppers. We are adding probably around four and a half cups. This is about five cups of chopped onion. Oh man, I just threw everybody across the room. <laughs> I'll have to clean that up. <laughs> it's no longer five cups of onions because I just launched some onions across the room. I like using this spatula turner thing because it scoops from the bottom, but the problem is is that it does things like catapults food across the room. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna be adding, apple cider vinegar. So the recipe said to add one and a quarter cups of apple cider vinegar. I am adding one and two thirds cups because I have four more cups of tomatoes and pretty much double the amount of hot peppers. So just to make sure I have a, a good distributed amount of everything, I'm gonna add a little bit more vinegar to it. All right, the next thing I'm gonna be adding is the garlic. The recipe says three cloves of chopped garlic. I am adding maybe six or seven cloves. They were different sizes. They came from Chisnuck red garlic that we grew. The next thing I'm gonna add is the cilantro. It says two tablespoons of chopped up cilantro and I am adding probably a little bit more than that. I'm gonna be adding a little bit more salt than the recipe says. The recipe says one tablespoon. I'm gonna be adding one and a half tablespoons of salt. Only because I'm adding four cups over on the tomatoes and two, like two, two and a half cups over on the hot peppers. So just to keep, make sure everything gets well seasoned. So everything's stirred in really good, so now I'm going to turn the burner up just a little bit to more of a medium high heat. So between a five and a six on my stove, um, we're going to want to stir this constantly. We're going to bring this up to a boil, turn the heat down once it has gotten to a boil, let it cook for about 10 minutes or so. All right, it looks like it's starting to come up to a steady boil. It's taking a really long time. <laughs> so I did kick up the heat pretty high. I have it up to high right now. As long as you keep stirring it, it's fine. You just wanna keep an eye on it so that it doesn't burn. It doesn't say that it needs to be a rolling boil. It just says that it needs to be boiling. turn it down to a medium again and just kind of let it simmer for 10 minutes. The next thing we're going to do while that's simmering is warm up our jars a little bit. So these are completely clean. We're using the regular mouth smooth side pint jars. I usually go for the wide mouth jars, one because you can usually eat from them, they're easy to pour. I prefer wide mouth jars, but they didn't have the smooth side and wide mouth. I, I don't know, I really wanted to use them. So they look really pretty and clean and simple and it just has the ball logo on it. Kinda wanted to just try these and see how I liked them this year. So I've had the water bath canner warming up back here and all I'm gonna do is put the jars 
in to get them warmed up. The recipe says that it makes six pint jars. I'll definitely need more than that, so I have 12 ready to go, just in case. All right, so we have about four minutes left for the salsa to cook and we'll so the salsa has been boiling for about 10 minutes or so turn that burner off i have the jars sitting in the water bath canner warming up so that when i go and ladle in the hot salsa into the jars there's not a temperature shock to the glass itself which can cause it to crack or break now we are gonna get this party started i got my spoon this I'm probably gonna be super messy so I think I might add a little mat here. We're gonna start with six jars. I have well over six pints worth I think but we'll see. So I'm just gonna stir and I think I'm gonna bring this over here. The recipe says you want a half inch of headspace. This is the bubble tool and it has, it shows different levels of headspace from a quarter inch all the way up to an inch. So a half inch would be there. And I like to do this on the first jar so I can gauge as I'm going through all of the jars about where on the jar the contents meets the, the headspace required to can it. So in this case, we need a half inch. I know to fill up to about this part right here on the jar with salsa. The next thing is you wanna get the air bubbles out. So flip the bubble tool over and stick it in and you'll see some air bubbles coming out. And then you're gonna wanna test again your headspace and make sure it's still at a half of an inch. If it's not, then you need to add more salsa, bubble tool again, have measure head space again. But in our case, we are good to go, so I'm gonna move on to the next jar. do with these is I'm going to wipe off the rim of the jar just to get any excess that may have spilled onto it. Any residue or dust or anything that might be on the rim of the jar could prevent the lid from properly sealing. So just to make sure that that won't be an issue. I take a little bit of white distilled vinegar and a t-shirt rag and I go around the rims of the jar. I use a t-shirt rag because it doesn't produce or have much lint, so I don't have to worry about that getting onto the rim itself. Then we're gonna take our clean lids and put them right on top of the jar. And we're gonna use our regular mouth bands and put them on finger tight. So just the tips of your fingers, and a good twist, and that's, that's all you need. We're gonna put these in the water bath canner. And I comfortably have room for one more jar in the canner, so I'm gonna do one more jar and then set the water bath canner while I refill all of these other jars. The water bath canner is pretty much full. In this last jar here, this, you know, I'm not gonna fill it up more than that. I'm gonna lower this down into the water. And you want about an inch of water over the top of the jars. So one way to check that is to take your bubble tool, and this is the one inch headspace mark. You can stick it in the water and make sure you have at least an inch of water above the jars, which I do. I have about an inch and a quarter, so that should be fine. I have it on high, and I'm gonna put the lid on and wait for it to come to a boil. Once it has come to a boil, I will set the timer for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, we'll take the lid off, set the timer again for five minutes. That will allow the jars to acclimate to the slightly cooler temperature on the outside of the canner so that there's no shock to the glass itself, which can cause it to crack. I have a lot of salsa left, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue filling my jars. The water bath canner is 
at a boil, and those cans are gonna process in there for 15 minutes. Okay, so the timer is going off. Now I'm going to turn the burner off. Take the lid off, and you wanna point it away from you so you don't scald yourself. Now we're gonna let this cool down slightly and set the timer for five minutes. After five minutes, we will lift them out and move them to a towel. All right, the five minutes is up. So we're gonna lift the rack out of the water bath canner. Now we are going to move these jars over to a towel on our countertop. They're already popping. Right, and I have four more jars to do, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick these in. Now, some of the water got boiled away from the water bath canner, so there's no longer an inch. So I'm gonna be adding more water to the canner. All right, now I'm going to put the lid back on, let this come up to a boil, set the timer for 15 minutes, and kind of repeat the process we just saw, and then I'll be done. So hey, we just canned up, uh, how many cans did I do? How many jars? 11 jars of salsa, and here is how they look. I can't wait to try it. I did have a little bit left over, so I put that in a container into the fridge to try a little bit later. The next step for these jars is they will sit on my countertop for about a day or so. Tomorrow I will write the contents on the jar lid, so zesty salsa and the date. I usually just do the month and the year. I will remove the bands and stick it into our pantry. And then they'll be good in the pantry for about a year. They won't make it that long. We will eat them well before then. It's really awesome that we were able to get 11 pint jars of mostly homegrown salsa. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you found it helpful or entertaining or something. And remember to hit the subscribe button if you're interested in these kind of videos. But that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. Bye.